if you want the comfort and luxury of a four-door executive saloon, but something that's a little bit different, then one of these cars could be for you. But which should you choose between the cool Mercedes CLS, the classy Audi A7 and the colossal BMW 6 Series GT? To help pick the winner, I'll see how stylish they are. I really like the look of this car. It's got this cool swooping effect to it. Try out their passenger space. It's like I'm in a limousine. It's just so comfortable. Check their build quality. And everything feels solid and well made. It's, it's great. Try their technology. It will show me where I'm getting close to something automatically. Look, it's saying I'm close to the bushes. And see what they're like to drive. Such a brilliant, smooth, quiet and strong engine. But first of all, let's see how much they cost. Now, the BMW 6 Series GT starts from £48,000, but through CarWell, you can save an average of £6,000 off one. But remember, it's the only car here that doesn't come with all-wheel drive as standard on the entry-level car. The Audi A7 does have all-wheel drive on every single model, and it starts from £55,000. But through CarWell, you can save £8,000 off one. Now, finally, we come to the Mercedes CLS. Once again, they're all all-wheel drive, but it starts from almost £58,000 though through CarWow, you can save an average of £7,000 off one. That's why it's important for you to click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen on the link below the video to go to carwow.com to see how much you can save on one of these cars. That saving could be very important in deciding which car you want, but one of the biggest reasons for buying one of these cars will be the fact that it looks different than a normal four-door saloon. So which of these three is the biggest head-turner? Some of Audi's designs are a little bit boring, but I really like the look of this car. It's got this cool swooping effect to it. It just looks nice. I think the red paint is helping here today, though I don't think anyone will actually buy the car in red. It's gonna be a silver, black, or white car, isn't it? Let's, let's be honest. And I'm afraid, have to be honest about the BMW too. No prizes for guessing which I think is the least attractive of the three cars. Yes, of course, it's the BMW 6 Series GT, which is a bit of an ugly duckling, whilst the other two are swans. On the other hand, Mercedes designers are smashing it at the moment. This is definitely the sleekest looking car here, partly because it's got such a, a narrow window line, so it makes it look more coupe-ish. I don't think it's quite as distinctive looking as the previous CLS and the original one before that. Still pretty though. Mind you, you have every right to expect good looks when you're paying this much money. After all, these coupe-like cars cost more than the equivalent saloon on which they're based. But what are they like inside though? Do you get your money's worth there as well? I won't lie to you, this is my favourite interior design out of all the three cars. It's got the right blend of minimalism, coolness and build quality. It's not too showy, but it's not conservative either. Really nice design with the dash, the way it sweeps round, the way this area there mimics the actual grill and you also get it here on the steering wheel and everything feels solid and well made it's, it's great i also like the look of the touch screens very bright and shiny you've got two of them one on top of the other and it's quite easy to go through the different menus the buttons actually vibrate and click when you touch them even though they are just touch screen buttons the system isn't so good when you're driving though it's just a bit harder to use and you know waving your finger around while you're driving and it's quite low so you're looking down there that doesn't matter so much though because you've got this full digital driver's display as standard and you can do all the functions through this so it's not a problem i want to show you this though like <laughs> look at this so where we film our test track it's actually used by Disney, and one of the films that they've actually shot here is Star Wars The Last Jedi. And if you look, when the Google satellite went over the track, they had the Millennium Falcon there. There it is, surrounded by articulated lorry crates, just so people can't see it, but the Google satellite did. How cool is that? Well, it's certainly a lot cooler than the BMW. This 6 Series GT has the least flashy interior. I mean, it's nice. It's solid, well put together, simply laid out, but it's just not particularly exciting. I also don't like this phallic gears <laughs> to that much. I do like the infotainment system though, so you can control it with a swivel wheel, which is good, much easier when you're driving, or it's a touch screen as well, and there's voice commands if you want to use those. I love the surround view camera you can get on this. I can look around the car and it gives me this 3D image, and then there's this other feature that's pretty cool as well. If I start to drive and go for the auto camera, it will show me where I'm getting close to something automatically lock. It's saying I'm close to the bushes. Let's just stop that noise. It's really annoying. There we go. <laughs> so that's cool. 
So if you don't get full on digital dials, they're like semi-digital. Most of them are digital, but it just doesn't have the functionality that you get in the Audi or the Mercedes. Mind you, there's an awful lot more than the dials to impress you in the CLS. As with the exterior, the Mercedes has the most swoopy and stylish interior. I really like these vents here, the way they're like turbines. You've got lots of curves going on. I like this panelling here. It's really nice finish to it. The quality isn't quite as good, I don't think, as in the BMW nor the Audi, but it's all very close. One thing I'm a bit disappointed with is this. Look, the blind for the sunroof. It's manual and a bit stiff. Weird in a Mercedes, considering this is a technology-filled car. You've got these huge displays, one for the main infotainment system, one for the driver, and you can control them either using these buttons here on the steering wheel, so you don't have to take your hands off the steering wheel, which is great, or you can use a swivel wheel for this particular screen here to go through all the different options, and it's generally pretty nice to use. Overall, there isn't much to choose between these three cars in the front. They're all full of useful technology and very comfortable, but is it the same story for those people in the back seats? Do you know what? I'm fine back here. People over six foot may not say the same thing because it is still pretty snug for me because of that sloping roof line. So I like the fact that the windows are quite large, so it's not too dark back here. And this feature is cool as well. Look, electronic touchscreen controls for the climate here in the rear. But if I really want to kick back and relax, the BMW is the place to be. Oh yeah, I really love it in the back of this car. I can recline my seat, I can really stretch out. I mean, look at that! It's like I'm in a limousine. It's just so comfortable. And also like in a limousine, I can put up my privacy blinds. So keep the sun out and stop prying eyes from looking in at me. Then I just sit back, relax and enjoy the journey, really. Although, of course, I'm not actually moving anywhere. It's certainly much more comfortable in the back of the BMW than in the Mercedes. Well, I think it's fair to say that this car actually sacrifices some function in the interest of form because that sloping roof line just means headroom is terrible. Look, my head is touching the roof. Shame because knee room is pretty good. Now, remember I said at the beginning when I was talking about the design that this kind of narrow window line made it look cool, but it also makes it look quite dark in here because there's not much light coming in. There's no doubt about it. If you need to carry passengers in the back, the BMW is the best car for the job. It's positively palatial for two adults, and it's the only one that will take three across the rear seat in comfort. Neither the Audi nor the Mercedes is much good for anyone over six feet tall, and their centre seats are so uncomfortable that it's best to treat them as four-seaters in everyday use. They're also not so good if you want to fit a child seat. Not because there isn't enough room for the seat itself, but because their low roofs make it hard to reach in and secure it. In this respect, the BMW comes out best again. That's thanks to its higher roof and the extra space in the back. Overall, in fact, the BMW works out as the best people carrier, whatever the size of people you're carrying. But will it be the same story with boot space? Or can the other cars make up some of that lost ground? It may look like a swoopy coupe, but look, the A7 has a practical hatchback tailgate, so it's dead easy to load things into the boot. Just get this out of the way. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to put it in the car. Now, if you want to fold the seats down, you have to walk around because the catches are on the top of the seat backs and the boot is so long, you can't reach them from the car. So you have to do it this way. Oh, the indignity. If you want to spare your blushes and get the most space for the least hassle, the BMW is the car for you. I'd like to introduce you to the most practical boot out of the three cars we have here. It's huge, it's a big square shape and BMW have thought of everything to make your life as easy as possible. For instance, you could hide this bit underneath this false floor, which is held up by gas struts. I mean, how posh is that? And then if you want to fold the seats down, you just do it electrically with these buttons. Bravo, BMW. I mean, look at that, it's massive. Which is more than you can say for the boot in the Mercedes. Unlike the other two cars, the CLS has a traditional boot like a normal saloon car, which means it's slightly less practical. Still, the space is quite large and you can fold the seats down if you want to. Carry longer items though you're restricted with what you can actually carry. Ultimately, if space is important to you, you need the BMW. Not only does it have the most room for rear seat passengers, it also has the biggest boot. And it's not just big, it's clever too, with no load lip to lift things over and seats that fold down flat. The Audi is the next best, but the Mercedes is in a distant third place for boot space. And the boot isn't just smaller than the other two, it's also the most awkward to use. That's because it doesn't have a hatchback style opening and there's a high lip to lift things over. Admittedly, you can fit a bike in, but you have to remove one of its wheels first, which you don't need to do in the other two cars. 
Overall, things like that make the CLS just a little bit less easy to live with in everyday life. And an easy life is what these cars should give you on the road, but do they? As with all three cars, this A7 is fitted with the upgraded air suspension and it is the best of the three. It's really comfortable, superb over bumps. It's just lovely to sit in, it just glides. It's also the quietest, get the least wind and road noise, though the engine is not the quietest. When you put your foot down, once the gearbox has finally responded, the engine delivers decent performance, it's just blooming noisy. It's a real letdown. Other than that though, yeah, I like this car. Just don't go chucking it into the bends too fast because yeah, you've got all-wheel drive grip from standard quattro across the range, but it's still no sports car, but then none of them are, and this is <laughs> easily as sporty as the other two, which isn't that sporty in the grand scheme of things. Yes, that's right. In spite of their sleek looks, these cars aren't really sports cars. They're more about effortless high-speed cruising, and that's why I'd recommend a slightly different version of the BMW. So the petrol engine in this car is pretty nice and smooth, but I would still go for the diesel, especially as you're most likely to be doing quite a bit of miles in this car, and the diesel is punchy and it gives good economy. Not quite as good as the diesel that you get in the Mercedes, but it's better than the one that you get in the Audi. Then there's the comfort levels. It's a big, comfy car, this. It does have the upgraded air suspension all round. It's not quite as good as the Audi's over bumps, but it's better than the Mercedes. However, on the standard suspension, if you don't want to pay for upgrades, this is the comfiest car. It's the least fun to drive, though, because there's nothing sporty about it at all. It's not trying to be sporty, and indeed it isn't. It does lean quite a bit in the corners, even if you put it in sports mode to stiffen up the suspension. There's only so much you can do, really. So, I like it. There's a lot to like about the Mercedes, too but one part is particularly impressive. Anyone who thinks that diesel is dead should drive this car because it'll make you change your mind. It's such a brilliant, smooth, quiet and strong engine. The rest of the driving experience in this car is pretty nice. So don't be confused by the sporty looks. It still is more of a cruiser and it's generally comfortable. And this one's got air suspension, so it just floats over bumps. It's just a bit annoying that you seem to get a bit more tire noise and wind noise than you do in the other cars. Still, I like the steering, it's very sharp and pointy, but it's still quite a big lolloping thing. Overall then, there's plenty to like about each of these cars, but which is the best? Now with all of these cars, they are each slightly compromised because they're trying to be a jack of all trades, a master of none. For instance, the 6 GT, it's practical, but it just doesn't look very good, whereas the Mercedes is the opposite. It looks great, but it's just a little bit impractical with that rear headroom. And that brings us on to the Audi A7 because I think it's the least compromised overall. It manages to be good looking, reasonably practical and nice to drive. And yeah, that's why it wins this test. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it and share it. Also click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow.